Hi and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be talking about and reviewing the Etcher Lab sketchbook. This is a 230 GSM cold press sketchbook. The version I've got is in the A4 sized and it does come in a few other smaller sizes, I think A5 and A6. It also comes in hot press. This is a sketchbook that was sent to me in the mail for free, so Etcher reached out kindly to send me through a, a sample to try out. So I haven't been paid or anything to do this video, but I thought it would be nice to go through and show you guys what it looks like and just a few demonstrations as well so that you know how it performs. Uh, normally it comes in a bundle of three, so obviously if you're gonna buy a bundle of three, you wanna make sure that it that it uh, performs as well as you'd like. So let's go ahead and open it. So first thing, um, notice it does come in a bubble wrap package. And let's take a look. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Uh, there's a bit of plastic as well on the outside. Quite a lot of packaging. Just let me get this off first. So it comes in a nice little folder like this and pull out the sketchbook. Okay, get it open. Okay, and uh, the great thing about these sketchbooks is the cover is also made of 100% cotton and I've seen a few of these reviews online where the artists have actually gone through and um, added their own custom design on the front so you can actually paint over the front and and um, design something yourself so that's a really nice and unique kind of touch anyway I I do work with sketchbooks fairly often and uh, in the past I've used Stillman and Byrne I've also had uh, custom sketchbooks with Saunders Waterford paper in it as well so um, I'm really interested to see how this uh, actually plays out. I like the landscape orientation of the sketchbook as well as I mainly paint landscapes. And uh, let's, have a, let's have a little look inside. So each book has 52 pages. This is the cold press version as I mentioned before. It's 100% cotton, 230 GSM. It's definitely got a, a bit of heft to it, this, this paper. So it's almost 300 GSM, and it's gonna be interesting to see how it performs. Another good thing is that the sketchbook actually sits open, so you're not having to continually press it down. Paper looks like pretty decent quality. The grain of it is still fairly smooth. Um, even though it is cold press paper, it is, it's fairly smooth. Though you can see bits of the grain showing through. I'm just going to go through to the back. Now there's something kind of tucked in here, a little folder. So there you go, it's just a little, um, there's anything left in there. It's really just a folder, I think, to store loose sheets of paper. There's a nice little note in the back. Um, and here we go, that's just some of the specifications of the Sketchbook A4 Cotton 230GSM, as I mentioned before. One thing I find that really strikes me from as soon as I open the package is just the quality of the, the actual sketchbook itself. It's made of 100% cotton, even the outside of the sketchbook. There's a little bit of a, a sort of give to it each way, but it's relatively sturdy. And uh, yeah, the, the only bit of non-cotton bit here is just the elastic on the side that sort of holds the book together when you're traveling. There's also a little uh, ribbon here in the middle to mark out the area that you're up to in your sketchbook which is a really nice kind of touch but um, it feels really quite premium and just has a really nice minimalistic and fresh look so let's get started and do a demonstration and I'll show you how the paper performs okay so as usual I'm gonna get started with the little sketch and I'm actually going to do four maybe yeah about four little sketches off the top of my head I'm not even looking at a reference or anything like that but just mark out some little squares to trial uh, just some techniques and basic landscapes I suppose so um, just like that they join together that's no problem um, 
so I think what we'll do for this one here, I'm just going to go in with the basic sort of mountain scene. You know, that going on in the background. Yeah, quite easy and smooth to draw on. Might just uh, start and get in a boat scene here, maybe with a bit of water halfway down the page. Um, you know, this actually could be a, a beach scene. Let's keep it a beach scene. A bit of headland at the back like that. This can be the, the uh, water sort of coming in and we can maybe get in some figures, get in a person walking down the beach here. Another person here as well, like that. Um, and we'll get in that so the boat scene, just something simple, uh, like that. There, maybe another one here. Right, maybe a little one off in the distance. There we go. And, um, for the fourth one here, um, I might just do a really quick portrait sketch. A very simple portrait sketch. Okay, something like that. All right. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with this little mountain sketch here, and um, I might just add in a, a river or something coming around the back. This will be nice, just uh, winding around and coming through to the front section here. Some bushes maybe around trees, larger trees perhaps just down here. I'm going to start off and use a flat brush for the sky. So just picking up a little bit of water and I reckon
reckon I'll go with some cerulean blue. Drop that in. Okay. Looking good. And you do get some dry brush effects when you drag the uh, brush across the paper a bit. This, uh, there's a bit of a tooth to the paper. Um, so just a little wash like that. And you know what might be nice as well is if I just add in some little, a little bit of darker paint up the top and allow that to uh, blend in a little bit. With the flat brush, just encourage that to blend a little. Okay, um, really is just feeling like normal watercolor paper, cotton watercolor paper. It's quite nice. Um, I'm going to try some kind of wet and wet effects on these mountains. If I just wet down this area a little bit here at the front, like this. Or just some um, clean water and I'll drop in a bit of color for the mountains just a bit of blue this is some ultramarine blue here mixed in with a bit of cobalt maybe some darker bit of purple here as well it has to be fairly thick and I'm just going to drop that in and see how it looks Okay, nice, get some of these ones in here as well, like that, um, and the ones on the side, like this, some sap green, now I'm just going to drop that in while the paint's still wet at the front. Here, just to get in a bit of this um, grasslands or whatever it is down the bottom while cutting around the river and I really I, th I really thought that the paper might struggle with um, just getting a, some of these light dry brush strokes in but um, there is enough of a, a tooth in there to imply that which is nice uh, I'm just going to drop in some more blue here for the water. Like that, and there might be places where it blends and things like that. That's all good. Okay. Fantastic. Let's swap to a little round brush and drop in some paint with the round brush. So, um, pick up a bit of this purple colour here. Um, we might drop in a bit there. Bit here and shrubs and things at the back, smaller, just in places like that. There, I want to get in a bit of a little reflection in the water for some of these. And I'm quite happy with how this is working out. Very vibrant, the colours, and there's enough drying time as well. You get some nice sort of wet and wet effects here. There's not too much, um, there's no absorption into the paper at all. So it's been sized correctly. Um, fantastic. I'll leave this one for a bit and we'll start working on this scene here, the beach scene. I'm going to try a calligraphy brush for this one on the right hand side. I'll be picking up um, again just a bit of cerulean blue to begin with 
and drop that into the sky. I'm going to make this more, definitely more obvious of a blue, like that. And um, drop that in, carry that blue down the page. Um, and uh, as we go down, just uh, stopping around here. Cutting around the headland as well at the back. There. Fantastic. And I might just drop in a bit of indigo. Tiny bit of indigo in the top section. See how that blends in. I love using wet and wet. Seeing how it interacts. Okay. And we'll move in. Just go further down now, and I'm going to pick up a bit of ultramarine blue. Drop that into the water section. Just dry off this brush a little bit. I'll pick up a bit, a bit more of this. Um, actually, it's a, it's a cobalt blue, a more brighter sort of looking one. And I'm going to just get that water in while my while that uh, sky is still a little bit wet. There might be some blending going on on the horizon line. Just going to leave a bit of, you know, we can leave some white in the papers. You drag that brush across the paper, you see you do get some of this um, tooth of the paper showing through, which is fantastic, um, as it is supposed to have a bit of a tooth to it. And as we go down further, I'm going to pick up a bit of uh, yellow, tiny bit of yellow, um, yellow ochre, quite diluted and encourage this to blend a bit into the water like this where the figures are as well just drop a bit in there like that and um, as we go down the page I just add a bit of burnt sienna in the bottom as well just to darken it off okay fantastic another little technique that I'm used to, to using as well is just sort of tapping tapping the brush on the paper um, while we've got some darker paint. I'll pick up a bit of kind of purplish paint and do that and we'll see how that works. Um, normally it should sort of uh, spread yeah, little dots that just spread around so just drop in a bit like that. Just to get some texture on the paper. Okay, I think I might just add a bit more water in there. Okay. And um, we'll also get the headland in at the back. I'm going to use a combination of, uh, this is a bit of hooker's green mixed in with a bit of uh, burnt sienna. It's going to be burnt sienna running through there. It has to be darker as well. Like that. Okay, it's a bit of spreading going on, but that's completely fine. Let it do what it needs to do. Okay, let's move on to this boat scene here. I'm going to pick up uh, the flat brush again. And uh, let's try a kind of uh, bit of a gradient effect. So I'm getting a bit of this yellow, it's a bit of gamboge yellow. And uh, dropping that in around about here, where the boats finish off, that the bottom there, and um, go up the page. As we go up, I'm going to actually pick up um, some of this blue here. Drop that in. Let's see how that 
reacts and mixes around. You can also tilt the paper to encourage the paint to sort of move up as well. Look at that. A bit more yellow running through here. Okay. And uh, moving down the page, I'm just going to pick up some more kind of warmer colors and drop that in to the water area here. Loosely. I'm really liking the tooth of the paper. That's for sure. You're getting some of this uh, dry brush effect, which I always love. And... Um, what I'm going to do now is just add in a bit of blue, a bit of this, um, I might go with ultramarine blue, get in some little areas here of the water, wet into wet, like that. Smaller up the top. Okay, it's looking good. That one's now dried and very nice effect there. It's uh, definitely lightened up and I can go back in now with a round brush. Yeah, I'm just gonna get in a little indication of some branches and things coming in from the side. This. There we go. Just uh, some quick little indications, maybe some leaves like that. There. Okay. Another one coming up here, just straight up. Okay, then a little, a few little birds. I'll move now down into this scene, and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of color. So. You know, for this one, I might say add in a bit of yellow here for the shirt of this person. And I'm going to try a bit of red or something like that. And there's a light purplish color dropped in like that. I don't want it to be too dark. Like this. Uh, we can imagine a shadow maybe forming to the right side of the figures as well. Um, I'm thinking what, what else could we potentially add in here? Um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple sort of scene. You, know, you could even put it some seaweed or something like that just washed up on the shore to indicate some, some debris. This could be a rock for example uh, with a bit of uh, light going to the right hand side there. Yeah. Darkness for the f legs. Yeah. Yeah. Might even just want to get in a tree or something like that on the side. And 
and um, a bit of colour for the heads. That's pretty simple. A dog. Okay, let's work on these boats a bit more. And I'm really loving this, uh, I'm really loving this surface. It's just so easy to work with and to layer and it's performing how it should perform with watercolors. In a lot of sketchbooks, they often use cellulose paper or uh, kind of non-descript paper, and you often get very varied results, and colors aren't looking as vibrant, but I'm quite liking this one. So I'm genuinely impressed. I feel like I could do a proper painting on this surface and just layer it continually and um, without it kind of going through the paper or having any funny effects. And uh, the consistency in which the paper dries as well, that's another thing. I've got the paper completely flat. And you know, often when you paint like that, you get areas where the paint just kind of pulls. But um, although it has pulled in a little bit in some areas, it's just dried very nicely and quite, um, quite, quite uniform actually through the whole pieces, through all the pieces. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, try this portrait, little portrait sketch that I've popped in here. I'm going to go in with a little round brush, maybe a bigger one. Let's try some red and a bit of yellow mixed together. Mm, it's looking a bit green there. I had a bit of blue mixed in from my last one. Okay, just drop that in. Just a warm color, really. And um, just go around the eyes. And the nose. Bit of the cheek here. that and down uh, the area of the neck and shoulder that I've just drawn in quickly the only other sketchbook that I can compare this sort of uh, style to is probably the moleskin landscape sketchbook and I can say for sure that the paper is uh, a lot better quality and uh, the moleskin uses 25% cotton from what I remember and uh, I really didn't like how it performed in washes um, it just didn't it just didn't and I really didn't like how it performed when I was doing larger washes uh, any kind of wetting wet effects it was just it would just pull in certain areas and uh, dry with blooms and things in areas so I wasn't so keen on that I used it more of just a, a sketchbook to test out some general techniques and things like that but nothing serious or even practicing for sketches I, I used my Stillman and Burn but i um, quite happy with how this one is turning out I'm going to grab a bit of, of this uh, 
brown, drop that in for her hair. Like that. I might just use a smaller round brush for this actually. So light wash for her hair. Just wanted some of that to blend in. Um, tiny bit of that to just blend into her face. So this is soft to the kind of edge. But I'll have to go through or go over it again. Just added a few more detail shadows and things like that here for her hair. Just getting a bit of colour now. Touch of colour for her eyes. And um, maybe a bit of colour for her lips too, just darken that down a bit. I mean, definitely not the best portrait I've done, but uh, a loose little sketch it's, uh, does the trick. And the great thing I'm noticing is just the, uh, the level of uh, just the washes that it's able to take. That can often be an issue with these cheaper sketchbooks where you just are not able to get in too many washes in as it starts lifting out the previous uh, previous layers. A bit of shaping around her face now just to get in a little bit more structure. And we can experiment a bit with some more kind of dry brush strokes with a bit of darker brown paint just to see how that goes. I should mix some of this dark brown with a bit of the neutral tint here. That way we can really get some proper dark strokes running through and um, let's give that a go. Okay, so that's looking, you're definitely getting the grain of the paper showing through which is, which is nice. Um, these dry brush strokes. Get some eyelashes in. A bit more water. Dry that off a bit.
Okay, let me just drop in a bit of a background now. So, just grab uh, this flat brush. And I'm thinking we'll go with a kind of a darker color. A bit of this purple and blue mixed together. Drop that in like this. We'll change it up as well. I might add in a bit of green in some areas. Just a darker color. Cutting around to the clothing and things like that. Near the hair, I'm going to go lighter. Dilute down this wash at the top. Yeah. Bit of cutting around. Bit of color, bit of warmth in this section too. Down the page, pop some blue in here. Oops, might be a bit much. Just dry that off a tad. Come down. Bit of cutting around again for the shoulder area. And, um, and that should just about do it. It's doing what it's supposed to do, that's for sure. With the paints, all the effects, um, I'm really impressed. So, it's definitely something I would recommend. Um, you know, I've used quite a few different sketchbooks and, you know, this one and the Saunders Waterford sketchbook that I had custom made those two would be my favorites to use so um, hopefully do some larger paintings in the future and post them up i hope this video was helpful to you and if you have questions anything like that just uh, leave a comment check out these tutorials down the side here i've got a couple of playlists that will help you get some ideas and improve your watercolors